In this video a uh, circuit where I'm playing with an oscillator that works around 107 MHz. And here is how it was made. Uh, when you are a little bit acquainted with uh, coils for that radio band, you can see here that there are approximately 6 or 7 windings of massive copper wire, uh, better is silvered wire, but anyway I've used uh, massive copper wire and its installation wire and the diameter of that wire is approximately 2 millimeters. And here the circuit, how it was made on the breadboard uh, with brass nails etc etc. The schematic is here. It's in fact a very simple schematic that refers to many earlier videos that I've made, but now it was made for 107 MHz. And of course be aware of the fact that when you say take here less windings, you can go to approximately 110 megahertz or even 120 or 130 megahertz and this is a disclaimer uh, I don't want that with this simple circuit you you can say uh, have effects on airplane communication of course uh, that's kind of uh, in a certain way it's not reasonable because we have here an oscillator that only strays out in the say approximately 20 milliwatt range but anyway uh, I want to be conservative anyway so don't disturb airplane communication uh, when you make that coil here too small anyway here is the bias potentiometer, uh, the 1K resistor protects the uh, transistor for destructive elements, destru uh, especially a destructive base current, emitter resistor, emitter capacitor and I found that after many experiments the circuit want only wanted to work here when I uh, connected here a 10 nanovar capacitor from the collector to the minus. Strange but true. And here we see the waveform on the oscilloscope. That's perhaps interesting to show that the scope indicates 53 megahertz but in reality we are on that double frequency so in a certain way the scope indicates the ground frequency the base frequency of this oscillator to show the instability let me move my finger here to the coil and that means that the oscillator is directly detuned out of approximately 107 megahertz to whatever anyway it has everything to do with how oscillators work uh, how fierce does this oscillator stray out its signal at least let's look at the scope the scope of course at least in the way I've connected the scope, cannot give a good idea about how far such an oscillator, uh, and then I mean in time, in terms of distance, can be received. But I've in my garden uh, a radio, so let's look to that radio, etc. At least. Uh, here, by the way, you can set a working point here of the oscillator. That's critical 
and also the tuning is very critical and the strange thing is important to tell that the biasing here of the transistor does not play a very big role at least sometimes this is important etc etc so uh, I go now to my FM tuner it's here and here is my radio signal on approximately 107 megahertz seems quite stable of course as long as the oscillator has the good temperature all the components work etc etc say after 10 minutes a quarter of an hour or so when everything is stabilized and now we go to my garden and in the shed of my garden I have also a radio and perhaps it's interesting uh, trying to get that same signal of approximately 107 megahertz on that radio so here it is and here you can hear it it's now approximately uh, 10 meters away from the oscillator and there is no by the way no antenna connected to that oscillator it only strays out uh, out of the pure coil that was showed earlier in the earlier video in the video not the earlier video but this video so and the hum that you hear is introduced by all the say uh, influences on my uh, workbench so that when you hear noise that means that the signal is diminished after approximately say seven or eight meters anyway back to my workbench and there's not so much more to tell uh, about that uh, oscillator say radio transmitter on approximately 107 megahertz not so much more to tell well here is that circuit again here we have the waveform again not a pure sine wave in the ideal situation it's a pure sine wave well perhaps it's interesting to show the effect of the biasing so here is that 25k bias potentiometer I've talked earlier about it in the video here it is and it's 25k let's look at the scope what happens when we change the bias of the BD139 the BD139 is by the way often sold as a typical audio um, transistor but it has a very very high uh, frequency range it can amplify surely up to approximately 120 megahertz that's the reason why I've used it so let's look at the bias and on the background you can hear that the signal is gone on my radio change here so there's a very very critical position here on that potentiometer where the the whole circuit oscillates and that's important to tell because on the world wide web you often find all 
kind of 108 megahertz uh, transmitters for whatever kind. And uh, in a certain way, it could be that you have to be lucky that such a circuit works. That's also the reason why I've put in here, especially that 25k potentiometer, so that you can bias every transistor properly, set it to its proper working point. So again, signal gone, no oscillation. And of course, uh, when you want to make such a circuit in a definite way, the voltage has to be stabilized. Uh, you can replace the 25k potentiometer by two fixed value resistors. Uh, that only works when the voltage is very, very properly stabilized. And uh, the reason is that that's clear to see that even when this potentiometer is turned in a tiny, tiny way, the oscillation stops. So there's only one point here, one point where it oscillates properly. Thanks for watching, that was all to tell. Perhaps it's interesting uh, to connect here a, uh, say, a piece of wire of, say, 20 centimeters or so to act as an antenna. That also will have an effect on the, uh, the tuning of the coil. When you make that wire too long, uh, the tuning will uh, can get out of order. Uh, well, that's more or less classical radio theory. And I've paid much attention to that in my books, in other videos, on my YouTube channel, etc. etc. Thanks for watching. Always interesting to see such a beautiful waveform. Though it's not perfect, it's beautiful and it works. And there is no modulation on that waveform, but uh, the only aim of this video was playing with an oscillator. <laughs>